I've said this before in other interviews as well. If you understand how the TypeScript compiler works, you really shouldn't try to recreate it in another programming language. Let me explain. One reason is just the historical evidence that exists against this idea. I've conversed with a lot of software developers at conferences that have toyed with the idea of creating their own types of programming languages, that is alternatives to TypeScript, and some have even tried to recreate TypeScript, but none of them have spent the time and had the same resources as Donny. Donny is not an average developer. He's already successfully built SWC, which is a compiler that is used to compile TypeScript into JavaScript, and it is sponsored by Vercel and used within the very popular framework Next.js. Now this is written in Rust, which makes it faster to execute than the official TypeScript compiler TSC, which is written in TypeScript. However, SWC does not perform type checking, which is a task that is still left to the official TypeScript TSC compiler. So, Tony set out to recreate the TypeScript type checker as well. Now, instead of using Rust, which is the programming language used by SWC, he decided to go with Go because it was closer to the kind of features that exist within JavaScript, for example, mutability and garbage collection that should make it easier to port the TypeScript source code into Go. However, simultaneously maintaining SWC and this new port in Go was just not maintainable. So he decided to go back to just using Rust and bite the bullet and hammer through and find a way to recreate the TypeScript type checker in Rust. That brings us to the current point in time where we find this new project STC is going to be abandoned. There were a few signs of this fact, for example, no commits have been made for two months, but more recently it has been officially confirmed as well. Now what you might be justifiably wondering about is why is it that people can create things like SWC and ES build, however creating the TypeScript type checker like STC just seems untangible. The answer lies in the TypeScript source code. If you go through the source code and look under the compiler folder, we find things like the parser, and the parser is something that will take the source code and convert it into tokens. And you can see that while it is a large file, it is still something that is tangible. This is something that someone can go through and review and modify over a course of a reasonable amount of time, like one month. However, the type checker is a beast onto itself. It is such a massive file that GitHub will refuse to render it with syntax highlighting. One more thing that makes the type checker different is that with the parser, we have a well-defined understanding of what the syntax for TypeScript looks like. However, in terms of type checking, there are much more subtle opinions. And this can be understood quite easily by simply looking at the function names as well. For example, just randomly, right now on screen, we have check and report error for resolving import alias to type only symbol. Now the TypeScript team does have a smart approach for actualizing what is and isn't considered a type error by the compiler and the answer simply lies within the tests. Now as you can imagine this is a fast moving target and porting the TypeScript type checker to be one to one compatible will be significantly trial and error based. TypeScript is ever evolving and checking more and more things in increasingly subtle ways because those are the difficult to spot JavaScript bugs that the TypeScript team has to tackle to increase our code quality. If you want to stay up to date with developer tips and tricks, smash that like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.